watch any movie and there's clearly the obvious bad guy or bad guys whom the protagonist of that movie fights. There's a demon to exercise. The bad guy commits atrocities while helpless people look on. The bad guy kills, rapes and plunders while the innocent suffer from his cruelty. The bad guy has got, got the whole system rigged and don't you dare challenge him. He'll kill you if you so much as threaten him and his authority is total. Nobody can touch him and nothing can hurt him. The protagonist starts out as a nice guy. A nice guy hailing from a humble background, a nice guy who has not much ambition in life and not much care beyond leading his life. The protagonist is content and happy with what he has and is confident in his ability to survive. The contrast is clear. The nice guy is generous and honest. The bad guy is totalitarian and nervous. His bad behavior stems from insecurity because he's worried about the world or specifically his own world. The protagonist, on the other hand, is oblivious to the world. Since he has not a care in the world, the, in fact, the protagonist is painfully oblivious to all the bad guys and all the bad things that surround him. And then finally, their paths cross. The totalitarian bad guy obviously crushes something or someone the good guy cares about. The how is immaterial, rape, murder, humiliation, injury, mockery, whatever. The protagonist now, in his obliviousness, goes on to appeal to whomsoever he believes is the righteous judge or authority. Maybe it's the police or law, maybe it's a king. This is the person or body that the protagonist believes as having the ultimate power as well as the clearest intentions of upholding justice at heart. It is his contact with his perceived system that makes the nice guy realize how thoroughly the bad guy has got the system right. And that is when he begins to pick a fight of his own accord. At first, it's only a matter of defending himself, his property and his people, and his dignity or ideas. But pretty soon, he finds out that there is no way to survive unless he completely surrenders. The bad guy just won't let him. He refuses to budge, however, but is filled with self-doubt. And that limbo lasts for only a minute or two in movie time before the bad guy makes contact again. This time, the humiliation is total. The nice guy either loses someone or something that he really cares for. And now, he just about loses it. Now he becomes an avenger. He decides to crush the bad guys once and for all and then sets out on his final journey. Inching closer to climax, he kills everyone or everything that protects the bad guy one by one until he finally gets his hands on the bad guy. Almost. But the bad guy has one last trick up his sleeve. He'll reverse fortunes for one more time, even if only temporarily. But suddenly the bad guy realizes for the first time in his life that the innocent are not afraid of him any longer. The losses he has already suffered at the hands of the protagonist, who is now no longer nice, have dented the perception he worked so hard to build. And now everybody can see right through him. And that's where you get your final climax. The protagonist once again reverses the tide and finally manages to kill the bad guy. The victory is exhilarating for every single member of the audience. When a movie is made well, you feel that pure joy, that exhilaration that protagonist appears to be having or experiencing. Even if the victory is bittersweet, the release of tension is complete. Roll credits. And that's the story we keep telling ourselves. We are fine. We'll rise to the occasion when we need to. We are the good guy. We're the protagonist. There are other forces keeping us down. There are bad people or bad governments or bad agencies or bad economy or bad upbringing or something else that's external. Something else we have no control over that keeps us down. 
We are waiting for the first clear confrontation, for that chance at heroism. But here's what we don't get. The bad guys don't exist in the real world. The demons with authoritative and totalitarian power only exist in movies. In real life, real life, there is rarely an external demon to exorcise. The real reason why you haven't confronted a bad guy in your life is because they just don't exist. I mean, sure, there are bad people and there are bad situations and unfavorable factors out there. I'm not denying all that. All I'm saying is that in the world we live in today, there's nothing out there that can actually keep us down. The demon to exercise you're looking for stares right back at you every single day when you look into the mirror. You are your own villain, your own demon to exercise. You are the only one keeping yourself down and you don't even realize it. It's always easy to point the finger at something or someone external and claim they or they or they are the reason why you're not where you want to be and why you're not who you want to be. But it's equally hard to point that finger at yourself and understand that if you're not who you think you are and you're not who you think you're meant to be, then it's because of you. If you don't have what you want, then it's because of you. It would make for a really boring movie if you took someone who was self-driven and then just went on to succeed on account of willpower and ambition alone, unless you're portraying the bad guys. And even then, the movies only work well if they're the catalysts that propel, propel the protagonist into go doing good things or bad but great things. Now, the bad guys are okay to be ambitious and nobody questions that, but the protagonist must be reacting to external triggers at all times. He doesn't pick up arms unless he's forced to. Unfortunately for you in the real world, no such antagonist exists. Or at least waiting for external triggers is no way to predictably create the future that you dream about. You are your own demon to exercise. You keep waiting and not wasting your time. You keep wasting your life. You are your own worst nightmare. You are the insidious laziness. You are the negative talker who keeps scaring you away from action. And unless you get that, unless you stop waiting for triggers and catalysts, you will never succeed. Success in the real world requires self-drivenness. And that's the exact opposite of waiting for something to happen or some stars to line up or for the situation to be just right.